Hi, my name is Paul Riddell, owner of Snowbar and president of Riddell & Company based in Inglewood, Colorado. Today I want to just talk about a, a little about um, snow retention and the history of snow retention from our perspective and from the perspective of Snowbar. Everyone knows that centuries ago snow retention really started in Europe and there's two forms of snow retention that was started. It was started with rocks and logs and the rocks were really set up as a field on roofs. Uh, in, the, in the past, people would use rocks on their roof to hold snow in place and keep snow from sliding off and damaging stuff in snow country in Europe. And then they also developed a bar type system by putting logs on roofs, keeping snow from sliding off of metal roofs using logs. So really today I want to talk about more of the log style or what we call the bar style. The rocks developed into pad styles that became used on slate roofs and eventually into the polycarbonate industry where they were used as a field of, of snow guards. So I really want to address the bar system today. So that brings us to the United States and to Colorado where my father Dick Riddell started Riddell & Company in 1976. Riddell & Company was started selling skylights and glue lamp beams and then eventually started selling metal roofing uh, from a company called AEP Span. And what we started, what AEP Span developed was the standing seam metal roof. Uh, many companies started developing a standing seam roof that had no exposed fasteners. So with the advent of a standing seam roof, what happened is, is being in Colorado, we started getting calls for sliding snow, people really wanting to solve sliding snow on, on metal roofs. In the 70s, our company partnered with snow jacks in using polycarbonates to glue onto the roof to help control snow. Well, what we found is people really wanted to, to find a system more like the log system that created a bar. So in our, in our um, diggings in history, we ended up finding a gentleman by the name of uh, Mr. Kuntz, Kuntz Construction. We interviewed him and in, as you can see in this drawing, in 1980, he ended up developing a system um, for going on standing seam roofs. And you can see from this drawing on an office plaza in Inverness, Colorado, um, that's just south of Denver. He developed a system for a Butler MR24 roof. The system started using a beam clamp. So beam clamps were used to attach metal products onto a bar joist. And that beam clamp he ended up using to develop a clamp on a standing seam roof. Mr. Kuntz developed a, a product to go on standing seam by using a common bar joist clamp. What he used was a threaded rod and he ended up bending it to match a, the MR24 roof. So this clamp was non-penetrating. It didn't penetrate the standing seam roof, leaving the water integrity of the standing seam. And that's the purpose of a standing seam roof, is not to allow water to um, come into the system. So with the bar, clamp, uh, the bar clamp, he used a rod system that he ended up developing and holding snow back and not penetrating the roof. And that was back in 1980. Then in 1987, through the years, Riddell & Company started selling products, um, metal roofing, and we sold a job down in Colorado Springs on Chapita Elementary. Down in Chapita Elementary, we used a standing seam product and they really wanted um, ice guards or snow guards over their doorways. So you can see from this plan in 1987 that the architect put on ice guards on the plan so um, the installer of the metal roof ended up developing a, a clamp system that used the same bar joist clamps to go on the metal roofing. And as you can see in these pictures, he ended up welding two clamps together, screwing the bar on and um, attaching it to the standing seam painted metal roof. The thing I'd really like to point out about this system that was installed in 1987 is that even though they ended up using a steel clamp that was um, a clamp just made out of pot metal, you can see how rusted it is. And the fact that the clamp hasn't moved or failed, you can see right around the screw point how there's been no rusting or, or um, integrity of the painted system on the metal roof. So it's just really interesting from 1987 that they had this, um, this metal, uh, this clamp that didn't penetrate the seam. So like I said, Riddell & Company was selling metal roofing in Colorado and really getting calls on how to control snow on metal roofing. So we had a customer that was installing AEP span metal roofing for us by the name of Jim Huff. And in 1990, Jim Huff really wanted to solve a method of holding snow on the roof. 
So he was the innovator of this clamp, and you can see from these die drawings in 1990, he came up with this innovative clamp and then also a bar system for accepting metal. And the interesting thing in is talking to him, as you can see in, in March of 1990 when he developed the system, that he came up with this innovative way of sliding metal into a, into a, a face plate. And the, the, how he came up with this concept in talking with him and what we really liked is he was sitting in his office one day and he had a nameplate sitting on his desk and he realized that the two inch nameplate, when you slid the nameplate in, um, it created a strip. So he really developed this, what, he, what we eventually called the snow horse product um, with a slip in piece of metal from a common nameplate that was sitting on his desk. So that's where this two inch strip came from that he developed into what we call the snow horse. And that was in 1990, he used, was using that himself. And um, at the time, then we developed the product called Snow Horse that had this slip in metal. And we really didn't do anything with it. We were looking at it. And at the same time, kind of concurrently, another customer of ours that was installing metal roofs by the name of Donald Drew in Colorado Springs started coming up with a clamp he called the Snow Bar. And that clamp, he took off the, the same beam clamp technology that was used on previous jobs and he integrated it into a one-piece clamp. Um, at the time, it was a two-piece clamp that the, the, the channel screwed onto the beam clamp. But that allowed that the bar to be dropped into the clamp system. So two of our customers came up with snow retention devices in um, Colorado, Don Drew in Colorado Springs and Jeff, Jim Huff in Denver. So Don Drew came up with the snow bar clamp and then he ended up filing for a patent in June 9th, 1992, and that was the patent that eventually became Snowbar. So at the time, we uh, had a project that Jim Huff was working on, um, Denver International Airport. At Denver International Airport, there's terminals, uh, there's a toll plaza that everyone, if you've ever been to Denver International Airport, you definitely have drove underneath this product. And you can see from these drawings, uh, Riddell and Company sold the roof. Um, it was done in 1992. And you can see from this drawing um, here that we used the Snow Horse product. We decided to use the Snow Horse product and that was installed in 1992 at DIA. And here's the product in 1992. Like I said, if you've ever been to Denver International Airport, you've driven through this and by this. And you can see from these pictures that the Snow Horse product I just showed you was used on that metal roofing in Denver. And you can see in this picture in 92 how we ended up developing that. So the thing is with the snow horse, this bar and clamp, my dad became very interested in it. And he and Jim Huff went to the um, October 1993 Metal Con show in Dallas, Texas. So in 1993, they took the snow horse product to Dallas, Texas, and they were showing this around um, at the Metal Con show going up. AEP Span had this on their booth in 1993 at Metal Con. They were handing this product out to several customers and people that wanted to, to see this product. The one issue we had when we installed the DIA project is that um, the problem we had with the uh, snow horse is, is that you had to pre-drill every bar to fit on the clamp. And also when the early clamp design of the snow horse is that it was such a small channel, it only worked on specific seams. So what we found was it was very hard sell because you had to pre-drill the ball. It was very labor intensive to install, install because you had to pre-drill the bar system and then the clamp only fit on one specific seam in the industry. So in 1995, we ended up partnering with Don Drew on the snow horse, on the snow bar clamp. The reason we really like the snow bar clamp is it fit more seams and it allowed the bar system to drop in and, and be used on many systems without pre-drilling the bar. So we really ended up partnering and my dad ended up becoming business partners forming Action Manufacturing in 1995 with Don Drew. The other advantage is, is we allowed us to paint the systems and do fully painted systems with the bar. So it allowed a painted system to match the roof where every component was painted. What we found with the Snow Horse product, even though you could slip in a piece of Kynar metal, people really liked the painted product that matched the roof and it gave them a better installation where they could just drop the bar product in. So as we developed, we ended up doing a stainless steel clamp because those early clamps were steel, they were rusting, 
We had a steel bar that was rusting, so paints were failing. So we really ended up going stainless steel bars and stainless steel clamps. So in 1970, in the late 1990s, we ended up just offering stainless steel bars. And then in the early 2000s, we, we went to offering a galvanized bar that we could paint that didn't have the rust issues that some of the earlier bar systems had. What we found is, is that a lot of people didn't want to wait for painted systems. We have a long lead time getting systems painted. So we really wanted to reintroduce the Snow Horse product we sold in the early 90s. So we took the Snow Horse product and we ended up developing the color bar system. So our color bar system works with our clamp, just like our one piece bar, our color bar system drops in. So it allows not having to pre-drill bars. It drops right into our clamp and it still used the same integrated snow horse design where the metal slides into to the color bar system. Again, you can see from that original design with the, the office nameplate, which was the nameplate that Jim Huff developed the uh, snow horse off of, it slips right into that plate where he, uh, he was the true innovator of this slip-in design in this original clamp. So in 2006, we came out with the color bar product that allowed us to to go to the market where if someone wanted to use a color strip that they could slide in based on our original snow horse design. And then leading into um, 2010, we developed what we call the roof clamp RCT. And that really was the last clamp that we needed in our uh, repertoire of products because we couldn't fit on T systems. The beauty with this original snow bar clamp is it fit on almost every system except a T or a bulb. So in 2010, we developed the roof clamp RCT that would fit on the T system and allow the system to go on a T product and really give us two clamps that fit any need in the industry. So that's kind of the history according to Snowbar. We just wanted to let you guys know where we came from and how we developed and, and what we did. So thank you so much for your time and enjoy the show.